the one who has the knowledge will have the power. The one who has the power will always have money. When you have money, you will always be able to fulfill your needs. Malchstich and his dialogue with the Emperor Timberland. In this world, we have four types of people. First type is endlessly busy with therapy of themselves. The second type is the type that chases money. The third type try to control the first two. The fourth type of people are the people that actually have the power. They have the power because they have technology that they use. In our expeditionary corpus, under the all-seeing eye of Mr. Oleg Maitsev, we research knowledge and we bring back technology that many thousands of years people have used to get the power and keep the power. This time we went to Greece in order to understand the mystery behind the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and to find the place where Christianity initially began, to find the one and only Jerusalem. The first expedition that we went on to Greece, the reason for it was never to try to kind of flip over the understanding of the believers of Jesus Christ. That was not our goal. In the result, it was a very, extremely hard expedition. It took about one month for me to recover from it. We came and we tried to, right off the bat, understand Jerusalem. We understood it, but it took a lot of energy. For me, as an applied scientist, this is kind of like a call-out. It was a certain step in my personal growth that I had to take. And for those who wanted to know the truth about all this, well, we brought it to them. The goal has been reached. We have доказали, что это Солоники есть библейский Иерусалим, и доказали, что Афон это модель корабельного Бога. Я не стал писать статьи в Когда вы знаете, я занимаюсь журналистской деятельностью, я не стал я это сделал для тех, кто хочет знать правду. А если другие люди хотят оставаться в забытии, во сне, то это их право. Мы никак не можем на это как бы повлиять. I, the unworthy monk, Daniel, the worst one out of all the monks, captured by many sins, unhappy with the good deeds, I was forced by my thoughts and the inability to wait around, 
I wanted to see Jerusalem and the Holy Land. Jerusalem is placed between the forests. Nearby, there are very tall, very rocky mountains. When you get near the city, the first thing you see is the column of David. Then if you walk just a little bit, you start to see the Ilion Mountain and the Holy Church, where lays the casket of the God. And after that, you see the whole city. That was a fragment from the book The Life and Travels of the Communist Daniel of the Russian Land. The Greek expedition was extremely different from anything we've seen in Germany, Sicily, and Venice. And the problem here is not any language barrier. It's not even in the Greek mentality. We believe there's something that is not seen at first glance. For instance, in Munich, Germany, they welcomed us with open arms. They said, please come. Research, make films, anything you want, any of our churches. We are very happy that you guys are learning about our beliefs, our religion. But here in Greece, they don't want for somebody to research their beliefs. Not once in my scientific research history that I remember it taking so long to solve such a equation. Usually it takes me 40 minutes. It took me 40 minutes to break through Venice and understand the city of Venice. But here it took a week. When Mr. Maltsev arrived, we started to search for the churches that we have planned to find. The one church that we didn't have any trouble finding was the church of St. Sophia. It's right in the middle of the city. All the other churches, they are hidden. They are hidden away. And everything in Greece is hidden away from people's eyes. In all the other countries that we've been to, we've never came across this problem where on the map, say Google Maps or Google Earth, it says that an object should be there and it's not there. And here we were faced with such a phenomenon almost every single time that we tried to find something. And I'm talking about official maps that everybody uses. It's, it's kind of impossible for them to lie, but here in Greece, they lie. So that's something that was really interesting. And we just started, you know, researching, driving. Uh, it was a whole week of craziness of trying to understand what's going on. Even the names of the churches on the maps were all backwards and we couldn't understand which was which. So my question is why in Greece they don't want for people to study their religion, study their faith? And why do they hide everything? All the people that enter Jerusalem are very happy. The gates of the Blizdoma David, from the side of the Wiflium, those are the gates of the Wiflium. You enter the city, to the right is a pathway to the church, to the Holy Church. And if you go to the left, you see the church where Christ was risen, and where the lays the casket of the God. book, The Life and the Travels of the Monk Daniel, he talks about four objects that tell us that this is the Jerusalem. The Tower of David has been chopped off, as you can see. It was hard to find. We were looking for it for a while, but as you can see, it's chopped off, so it was hard to see. The gates of the Binyamin. At first, we thought that these here were the gates where Christ had walked in, the Holy Church, 
And finally, the church where Christ was risen, and where lays the casket of the God. After a whole lot of research, we have found the gates that the monk Daniel had entered the city. It's located at the end of the old city. It's located inside the fence that surrounds the city. From the church where Christ was risen to the church to the holy church is no more than two flights of the arrow. The church was wondrous and craftful. Inside there was mosaic. Church is round and inside is beautiful art. It had four doors that were made out of steel and gold. The top of the church was covered in mosaic and on the outside at the very top was gold covered metal. In his diary, the monk Daniel is describing the church, the holy church. At the time of the expedition, we found this church in Jerusalem. Today this city is called Thessaloniki and the name of the church is Ratonda. So it is obvious that the physical location and the physical look of the church is exactly as, as the monk David describes. The church where Christ has risen is square and round. The width and the length is 30 sajen. Inside the church it's very roomy. Here at the top lives the patriarch. From the door to the altar is 12 sajen. Exists a myth that Soloniki or Thessaloniki was the center of the world. In translation, Thessaloniki is translated as the city of the sun. They say that here was a church of the sun, the biggest church in the world at that time. Thessaloniki was the cultural and the religious center of the world. Our city is a big city, big European city, that is located on the peninsula of El Kadiki. And nowhere in the world is a more holy peninsula than we have. And we are very proud of that. So is that what the Greek person thinks? Yes, it is. But where, where does he get this information? Well, the Greek person wakes up and he goes outside and everything that he sees is very spiritual, very religious, and so forth and so on. So what we have on our hands today is that most of the Greek people, their opinion is that the Orthodox religion began in Greece. So please tell me, uh, the Greek people, they believe that this is where the Orthodox religion has started? Yes, they do. And what about Jesus? Where was he? Well, I don't know where he was. Well, from my understanding, then it's also here. If the Orthodox religion was here, then Jesus was here. I don't know, maybe Egypt or something. Masovsky and Flamenco think that Christ was the God, the Slav Slavic God that came. Some people think that Christ is a Tsar. Everybody has their own myths about this. And here we face a question, why is all this being done? 
And I will tell you why. Because the symbols and myths, they control the consciousness of a person. Can we say that Soloniki is a religious center? Uh, religious... I don't know. Uh, well, I think so, yes. Yes, I definitely think it is. I mean, just one mile radius, there's so many churches, and Mount Athos is just 100 kilometers away. You know, all the people here, they live their regular life, but it's like they have this second part to them that serves God. Они живут вот обычной жизни живут, и у всех, по-моему, в душе есть какая-то второе я, которая служит Богу, смотрит туда. Я сказал, когда в автобусе едут, они сразу вот вспоминают это. Everybody wants to think that they're born into a religion, into a belief that is that controls everybody else, that is in control, that is the that is the best. And they want to believe that they because they were born into this religion, then they have the power over everybody else. So tell me, here in Greece, you guys are believed that this is the real Orthodox religion. Yes, of course we do. And all of the other Orthodox and Christian religions, they have kind of weird off to do their own thing. If you drive a couple of hours and go look at the meteors and look how people were able to build them, and or you go for four days to Holy Mount Athos, then you will definitely understand that this really is where the Orthodox the religion has started. When first we just get there, we try to understand how things really are. At first we're faced with a lot of questions and hypotheses that are put in front of us to research. Then we start to gather information and to make further conclusions regarding the information that we gather. We are researching power. We're researching power of people on Earth in different eras. And we're researching the mechanisms of how these people got the power and how they were able to keep it. How did they control their people? Why did they build such fortresses? Which technologies did they use to keep this power so nobody could take that power away from them in the future. The next step to the expedition is the processing of the information that we have gathered. After the information has been processed, we are faced with a certain technology. A technology that Mr. Maltzov has pulled out of all that different information. So our expedition to Greece is not for us to find Jerusalem for you guys. This expedition is not to try to find where Christ was crucified. And this expedition is not because we want to tell you about Mount Athos. On these expeditions, we are researching power. There's hundreds of questions that need to be answered and to be turned into working systems. Then these technologies are put through testing in some sort of laboratory environment, as per se. Uh, and of course, after that, we apply them towards our businesses. And then we teach them to other people, so other people can use these technologies, of course, on certain agreements. And this is how, after every expedition, we get our certain technologies certain things that we can use, but most important, we get people that go on these expeditions that become very prepared. You see, these expeditions kind of bring a person's level of preparation to a higher level, and then they use that level of preparation in their regular life, 
and they become much more successful than anybody else that's around them. The expedition has its own equation. Many factors are in play that the expeditionary focus has to overcome. I would say the Greek expeditions, they're not the easiest. You know, Greeks, they're just different people. And I've never been to Greece, and whenever I was trying to hook up mobile internet for us, it took me six hours, because Greeks, they're very, very slow. That's just their way of life, they just do everything very, very slowly. In this expedition, our SD cards burned up, our electronics burned up, uh, files were being lost. What I personally noticed about Greece is it has the most counterforce I have ever faced out of any country. I have never faced something like this as a scientist, as an applied scientist, that this type of equation cost me a whole week. Usually it takes about 40 minutes to solve such a problem. We didn't understand anything. We were just walking around for a whole week, walking around and studying the city. If we would have started from Mount Athos, it would have been very easy to solve this equation. But because we got to Mount Athos after we solved the Jerusalem equation, it was very difficult. Before we moved on to Mount Athos, we walked around Thessaloniki trying to understand where we should start. Well, I would have started everything from Mount Athos if I knew ahead of time that everything here is backed by Mount Athos. But I didn't know that, and Alex also didn't know that. That's why it was extremely difficult for us to solve this equation. You know, searching for the, the church where Christ has risen. Also searching for the mechanism that the city was built using by. All this was very hard because we didn't know at first that Mount Athos stood behind all this. But now I don't know how we didn't see it at first because everything screams about Mount Athos backing everything around here. We were here the first day and nothing, you know? We had thoughts, we had opinions, and some other things, but we didn't have any results. I mean, a result that we could have showed. Of course, me and Alex were showing uh, our people the things that we were doing from day to day. As Alex said, the first week, all I was doing is just gathering all the information together. You know, we thought that all this would happen really quickly, but no, it was happening very, very slowly. We were always missing some parts that would answer certain questions. And only after all that madness, we had went to Mount Athos, and that is where Mr. Mindset has concluded that Mount Athos is what we call the system of the ship guard. The second secret that didn't let us sleep at night was who was crucified. Was it Jesus Christ or was it somebody else? We actually had to look up through all of human history to understand that it doesn't really matter who was crucified. And this is a scary conclusion for all the believers. It's probably not very comfortable for all the Christians. But in reality, it is completely truthful. The people should as Christ said, bow to the Holy Spirit. It was said that your priests told you that you have to bow down in the church, and our priest said we have to bow down on the mountain, which Jesus replied, you guys don't know what you're talking about. 
you have to bow down to the Holy Spirit. As said in the Bible, don't make a God out of something that you believe in. One of the main symbols in this world that rules the world is при этом возникает вопрос, символом чего оно является на самом деле. Можете and the degree of simulation. In the initial Christian or Orthodox religion, Christ was, was separate and the cross was separate. And only after some time it was all connected together into the crucifixion. Christianity itself existed much earlier than the Bible. So if we look at it logically, first the Christ would have to be crucified and then somebody would have to write about it. And only after all that would you have all the pictures, icons uh, and the entourage. No, it's possible to make this up. I'm not saying that it was made up, I'm saying it could have been, very easily. Because I found a completely different Jesus Christ, a completely different Savior, that me and Alexei have discussed in my book, The Ship God. And this is the initial system where Christianity's roots came from. This is where the myth of Christianity started from. ask me, they say, Victor, why did you decide to do this expedition? This expedition is for me and for people that want to know the truth. Even though it's a small amount of people, but to that small amount of people, it's very important to know how it really was, how everything really was. A human is able to become whole, able to not get in the way of others is able to live the, a right way, to be wealthy, and to be able to protect what he has built. So the whole trick to this limitation of the truth, so if you stop, if you get away from the limitation of the truth, you will become strong and you will no longer need to pretend. This is the feeling that I had. It felt like after that expedition, I became stronger. And that's the whole reason behind the expeditionary corpus. When we're in the expedition and we're working, the expedition takes away the ability of a person to pretend and if we are weak then we become strong we free ourselves from this cross that has been put upon us since birth is we want to show you how the mechanisms work that allow a person to get power, whether it's on a certain territory or in the whole world, and how one type of people control the other type of people. And I want you to compare that to that, what they do with you every day. And if you find something similar, 
then a question should come up in your head asking how can I do so to where I can become disattached from that so I can become strong and very resultful which will give you the real power to call yourself a human being. The actual technology, uh, the block of knowledge that we get at the, at the end of the expedition, that's the most interesting. The most valuable is the end result, the technology that we got that lays a path for us for other research. Now we understand the system of preparation of Mount Athos. It is called so-called Zhrichskaya Gorka. So you may ask, okay, so we know all this, but why do we need all this? Well, the reason is because every single one of you wants to be well off, and they want to live good. And if you want to live well, you want to live good, you want to do business. And the system of preparation and the tradition of Mount Athos is something that pretty much stands behind all of the business you see. And so the mechanisms that they use, they can be used just like in business, and just the same in real life, in regular life. The goal that I am after personally is to give you the ability to make a choice, to make a decision. Do you want to be a human or do you want to be a slave? Now all that technology that we have, that answers the question how to do so, how to become a human and let you decide what place you will take in the era that you're living in.